We finally have some leaked benchmarks for the new M1 iPad Pro, and to be completely honest, they have blown me away because we were expecting there to be some pretty big thermal throttling issues due to the super thin size and the new ultra bright XDR display. So what I'm going to be doing is analyzing those leaked benchmarks to try to figure out how much thermal throttling there is compared to an M1 Mac and to see which people are going to be impacted and along with that help you decide if you should pull the trigger and upgrade to the new iPad Pro right now. And by the way, we've already ordered both the 11 inch and 12.9 inch models and we're going to be doing a full comparison between the two and between the older iPad Pros. So definitely subscribe right now so you guys don't miss out. And with that, you guys can help us reach our goal of 1 million subscribers before the end of the year. We would really appreciate it. Now, before I get into those leaked benchmarks, I want to say that we were actually wrong about our performance of the M1 iPad Pro in our very first video the day after the spring loaded event. And it wasn't just us. It also seems like Apple may have understated it just like they did with the M1 Mac. In terms of multi-core performance in Geekbench, we estimated that the iPad Pro would score around 7,042 points, which is actually pretty good considering the fact that the previous iPad Pro scored only around 4,700 points. So that is a huge improvement. And in terms of graphics performance, we predicted that it would score around 16,855 points due to thermal throttling because the iPad is obviously much thinner than the MacBook Air. But wait until you see these leaks, because they are incredible. So let's get right into it. Starting off with the CPU performance, the single core score is basically identical to what you'd get in the MacBook Air, which of course was expected since single core tasks don't typically cause thermal throttling. And this means that everything from using the UI and basic web browsing and simple apps is going to be extremely snappy, better than it's ever been before. It's going to be just flawless. Now getting into the multi-core performance, the leaked score is actually around 300 points higher than our estimate, which isn't too far off. And it is awesome because it shows that the cooling system is killing it so far, at least on the CPU side. And honestly, this level of performance is overkill for basically every every single app on the iOS app store because the previous iPad Pro already ran everything without any issues whatsoever. So the big question is this, why would you need to have so much power in your iPad Pro? And there are actually a few really good reasons. Well, first, you obviously would like to have a future-proof device with as much performance as possible if you're spending this much money, which is what we've already said about the new M1 iPad Pro in our previous video. But second, I have a good feeling that Apple is going to be bringing professional Mac apps to the iPad Pro, including Final Cut, Logic Pro, and Xcode, which is exactly what John Prosser leaked last year. So those apps will definitely take full advantage of the M1 chip, and that's why this change is so great for the iPad Pro. Now moving on to graphics performance, this is where we were really wrong with our prediction of 16,855 points, which was also calculated based on Apple's loose multipliers. We were so far off from that that I'm honestly shocked that Apple pulled this off. This new M1 iPad Pro actually scored as high as 21,000 1,300 points in metal, that is over 4,000 more than I thought it would, and almost double compared to the previous A12Z iPad Pro, which is mind-blowing. So it is shocking that this iPad Pro would have more graphics performance than the base MacBook Air, which of course uses a 7-core bin version of the GPU, but it's also thicker and larger overall compared to the super thin device. Now, if we compare that to the 8-core version, like in the M1 MacBook Pro, the iPad Pro is only about 700 points lower, which is really hard to believe because this iPad Pro obviously doesn't have a fan, and once again, Again, it is super thin. Now I know that a lot of you guys are going to say that Geekbench doesn't matter at all in terms of thermal throttling, but it actually has in the past for Apple devices. So let me prove it to you. The A14 chip in the latest iPhone 12 scores around 9,000 points in the metal graphics test, but that same exact A14 chip in the iPad Air actually scores as high as 12,000 points. So this shows that the iPhone is losing about 25% of its potential peak performance just because it's being intentionally throttled 
modeled by Apple. And we actually proved that the iPhone does have thermal throttling issues by playing games like Genshin Impact while at 80% brightness. The iPhone started to heat up and the display dimmed so bad that it was hard to see all of the details going on in the game. While on the other hand, the new OnePlus 9 Pro had no dimming issues whatsoever because of its new vapor chamber cooling. So the point that I'm trying to make is that if the M1 iPad Pro suffered from massive thermal throttling issues, Apple would have intentionally slowed it down like they did with the iPhone, but it's literally barely slower than the M1 MacBook Pro, which is the best news we could have received from these leaks. However, these leaked benchmarks don't tell us the full story for a couple of different reasons. First off, every single one of the leaked M1 iPad Pro submissions on the Geekbench website has 16 gigabytes of RAM, which actually does impact the score. Now, not by that much, but it definitely does, which we've actually proved in an iMac RAM video we did last year. On top of that, what if all of these leaked benchmarks on the website are specifically from the 12.9 inch iPad Pro, since that's the model Apple wants reviewers to get into their hands and show off to the people. So what if the 11 inch model actually scores worse than what we're seeing in these leaks? If you think about it, the 12.9 inch model is physically larger and actually thicker than the 11 inch model, so it probably does a bit better at cooling because there's more room for heat to dissipate. But of course, that's something that we won't find out until we actually get them in our hands. So be sure to subscribe because we'll be doing a full comparison between the two to find out and also between the eight gigabyte and 16 gigabyte RAM versions as well. Now, the last thing that I wanna mention is that Geekbench doesn't tell the full story because it does run quicker than other benchmarks. So the chip doesn't have as long to heat up. So in very long and heavy tasks that will heat up the M1 chip, you should probably expect thermal throttling because the M1 Max MacBook Air thermal throttles in Cinebench R23 when compared to the MacBook Pro. And I would say it's tasks that run longer than five minutes, for example, video exports or photo exports. However, not many people are gonna be using it for those kind of tasks. And with that, this M1 chip is so powerful that what if it's able to complete most productivity tasks before the chip even has a chance to heat up and start thermal throttling, which is what we've actually seen with our M1 MacBook Air in a variety of tests, even exporting a bunch of raw 42 megapixel images that are color graded and it gets done pretty much as fast as the MacBook Pro. And of course, that is the ultimate goal, get it done quickly and efficiently. But based on these leaked benchmarks, I'm even more confident now that this iPad Pro is gonna be future-proof because of its killer performance and the new Thunderbolt port. On top of that, the M1 chip comes with Apple's new 16-core neural engine, which is gonna absolutely kill it for machine learning and AI-based applications compared to older iPads and even compared to older Macs and Windows computers for example, we tested out the new Photoshop, uh, which is optimized for the M1 chip, their new super resolution tool, and it literally took 13 seconds compared to over 10 minutes on our new Intel laptop, which is insane. And with this new chip, more applications are gonna be making use of that crazy capability. So if we look at a four-year-old 10 and a half inch iPad Pro with that A10X Fusion chip, the new iPad Pro is almost three times faster in terms of graphics performance, which is insane. And that doesn't even count this new machine learning. And in terms of multi-core performance, it is literally over three times faster than that 10 and a half inch iPad Pro. So anyone with an iPad that doesn't come with an A12X or A12Z chip is gonna see a huge difference in performance. But honestly, if you already have a 2018 or 2020 iPad Pro, you're probably not gonna notice that big of a difference, at least at launch, unless you're planning to absolutely push it to its limits. So even though the M1 iPad Pro is enticing, don't feel pressured to buy it because you might not notice that big of a difference coming from the recent models. And like I said in my last iPad video, when was the last time that you complained about your current iPad Pro being too slow? But there you guys go. If you disagree with my conclusions on the performance, comment your thoughts down below. But if you agree, click that circle above to subscribe for more videos like this one. Check out one of the great videos over there. Thank you guys for watching. This has been Max and I will see you in the next video.